From time immemorial, the Gulf Stream has intrigued those navigators who crossed its path. American whalers in the early 18th century were the first to become aware of the path of this powerful current that traversed their fishing waters. Then, in 1769, when Ben Franklin was deputy postmaster general for the American colonies, the British authorities commissioned him to investigate why English ships crossing between Europe and America suffered delays of several weeks along the way. Franklin contacted a cousin, a former whaler in Nantucket. He consulted ship's logs and conducted experiments out at sea, all of which led him to discover the existence of a powerful current in the middle of the Atlantic. Franklin realized that depending on the route that the ship captains took, sometimes it would take much longer to cross the Atlantic Ocean than others. And so it was working with his cousin, Timothy Folger, that he determined that there was this swiftly moving water, a stream, if you will, and he called it the Gulf Stream. And it was that stream of water that if you could get into the stream and allow it to propel you across the ocean. Armed with his discoveries, Franklin set about plotting a precise chart of this river under the sea. And it was in Paris, in 1785, that the very first representation of the Gulf Stream was finally published. A prized duplicate has been carefully preserved in Paris in the Department of Charts and Plans in the National Library of France. Department curator Hélène Richard continually marvels over the preciseness of Franklin's drawings. L'une des raisons de la notoriété de cette carte, c'est le fait qu'elle n'ait pas été contredite sur le plan scientifique. Elle a été complétée, elle a été relativisée, mais elle n'a pas été contredite. La, la véracité de cette carte, la réalité de cette carte, euh, en a fait la notoriété. According to Franklin, the Gulf Stream stopped somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic. Two centuries later, however, Progress in oceanography enabled scientists to completely and accurately represent the surface of the ocean current. What we now call the Gulf Stream is a powerful surface current whose flow corresponds to 150 times the flow of all the Earth's rivers combined. Driven by the trade winds, its origins lie in the Gulf of Mexico, from which it gets its name. It carries the tropical waters from the Florida Strait to the great banks of the New World. The Gulf Stream then heads eastward, where it splits into several branches, one of which carries its warm waters to the borders of the North Atlantic. It is this North Atlantic drift that one commonly associates with the Gulf Stream, and which is largely responsible for the mildness of European winters. But the Gulf Stream's voyage has only just begun. As soon as the tropical waters hit the Arctic Ocean, they cool abruptly and plunge towards the abyssal zone to form a loop known as thermohaline circulation. Then, like an immense conveyor belt that slows down in the ocean depths, it sets out again southward to rejoin the beginning of the Gulf Stream off the American coast. Without these beautiful mechanics, the Inverview Gardens would be a barren moor flattened by winds, and the Breton frigodems would have to break through the ice for their wintertime swims. <laughs> 